Assistant with Johnson County Extension and today we're visiting Iron Mountain Farms to learn more about horses and how they impact agriculture. Horses were first domesticated about four to six thousand years ago and then uh, horses were originally used as a source of food. Once people learned that they could ride them, they used horses as a means of transportation so they could travel farther and gather food sources further away. Over the years, uh, horses and how they've <laughs> impacted humanity and agriculture has changed vastly. Uh, the first horses were used to pull chariots as transportation and also in war. As people uh, and citizen civilization evolved, um, horses were then used for agriculture, transportation, um, and even in medicine in, in modern day. There are over 350 breeds of horses in the world. These breeds can be categorized into five classes of horses, draft, sport, lot, pony, or feral breeds. Dr uh, Bud is a draft horse. His breed is Pertron, one of many of the draft breeds. Bud weighs about 2,000 pounds and he stands about 18 hands tall. So horses are measured in hands with one hand being about four inches across the palm. So if you want to find out how, uh, how tall you are in hands, just be sure to take your height in inches and divide that by four and that'll tell you if you are a horse or a pony. A horse is classified as standing 14 and a half or 14.2 hands or taller to be a horse. Anything under that is considered a pony. Now Bud's a draft horse and so throughout history draft horses have played a major role in a lot of different things. And we think of them now as mostly involved in agriculture, pulling a plow, maybe doing some logging, pulling a wagon for transportation, and other things. But in history, draft horses also uh, served as knights horses because knights in armor, their armor was so heavy that they had to have a big horse to uh, carry them in their armor. So knights were our draft horses were also war horses throughout history. They also served um, at pulling heavy loads like cannons or heavy artillery throughout wars and other aspects as well. Now we're gonna check out some of the lighter horse breeds. This is Tater. Tater is an American quarter horse. And these horses are prized for their versatility. Uh, Tater is used mostly for recreational trail riding. However, quarter horses are valued for their uh, ranch work. They can also race um, and perform a lot of other sports. So quarter horses are probably the most popular horse in the United States, and there's a reason for that. So we love our quarter horses. They are a light breed. Most quarter horses average around 15 hands tall. So as you can see, he's a lot smaller than Bud is. Though there are numerous breeds of light horses, some individual equines have risen to fame. For centuries, horses were prized for their steadfastness and bravery in battle. Among the most decorated military horses is Sergeant Reckless, a Mongolian bred mare. She was purchased off a racetrack in South Korea as a two-year-old by Lieutenant Eric Pedersen, commanding officer of the 75mm Recoilless Rifle Platoon, 5th Marines. She was renamed Reckless and trained to navigate the rugged terrain and avoid communication lines while hauling heavy artillery shells for the Recoilless or Reckless rifles. In April of 1953, in the battle for Outpost Vegas, Reckless hauled ammunition for the better part of three days to the Reckless rifles by day and the mortar crews by night. She was twice wounded and resumed working after being patched up. She was even known to provide cover for her soldiers. In one day during this battle, she made 51 trips, traveled more than 35 miles, and carried over 9,000 pounds of ammunition. Reckless would often make these trips on her own. When descending the ridge to reload, she would often carry wounded or dead soldiers on her back. In 1959, she received her final promotion to Staff Sergeant Reckless in the Marine Corps and is remembered as a hero and one of the greatest war horses of all time. Hollywood also has its fair share of famous horses. Trigger is perhaps one of the most recognizable. The iconic Palomino is most famous for starring in the Roy Rogers show on TV. Trigger also starred in several movies uh, throughout his life. Trigger soared to popularity from the 1930s to the 1950s as the famous mount of cowboy Roy Rogers. Rogers was careful not to overwork his equine partner with movies, TV shows, and in-person appearances, so he did purchase Little Trigger and Trigger Jr., which were also Palominos, 
to assist with personal appearances, although he did not like to publicly discuss that there was more than one trigger. The caparisoned or riderless horse is a longtime military tradition used by many cultures to honor fallen warriors or soldiers. Leading of the deceased horse symbolized the rider's last journey. Today, the honor is reserved for military individuals who are a colonel or above in rank. The boots are placed in the stirrups backwards to symbolize the rider looking back towards the living one last time. Blackjack, a Morgan quarter horse cross, is one of the most notable cap horses. He was used in the funeral processions of Presidents John F. Kennedy, Herbert Hoover, Lyndon B. Johnson, and Army General Douglas MacArthur, along with hundreds of other servicemen in Arlington National Cemetery. Blackjack is one of only two U.S. Army horses to receive full military honors. Thoroughbreds are prized for their speed and stamina over long distances, with many thoroughbred horses earning their place in history for their feats on the racetrack. The highlight of horse racing in the United States is the Triple Crown, a series of races for three-year-old thoroughbred horses. The first race is the Kentucky Derby. Two weeks later, the Preakness Stakes, and three weeks following the Preakness, the Belmont Stakes. In the history of the Triple Crown, only 13 horses have won the title. Among the most famous winners are Secretariat. Secretariat won the title in 1973, affectionately known as Big Red. Secretariat set records for the fastest time finishing the Kentucky Derby in under two minutes. He also finished the Belmont Stakes 31 lengths ahead of the second place finisher. His average speed in these races was 37.7 miles per hour. In 2015, horse enthusiasts watched as American Pharaoh became the first horse in 37 years to win the Triple Crown title. Justify is the most recent winner, earning the Triple Crown title in 2018. So the last class of horses that we're going to talk about today are the feral horses. Feral means wild. And so the wild horses that we have here in the United States are the Mustangs. The Mustangs first came to the Americas with 16th century Spanish explorers. And so as those explorers moved through the area, of course, some horses escaped and over time um, they reproduced. And now we have bands of wild Mustangs throughout the United States. Cajun is a Kiger Mustang and he descends from the Riddle Mountain band um, that is managed in the Southeast Oregon area. So that's one of the two places in the United States that you can find Kiger Mustangs. Mustangs and wild burros can still be found throughout the western United States. Some herds like the Kiger Mustangs in Southeast Oregon and the Pryor Mustangs in Southeast Montana and Northern Wyoming have distinctive traits and traceable lineage while the wild burrows, which Oatman, Arizona is famous for, are thought to have been abandoned, usually by the death of their owners, during and after the mining boom in the mid-1800s. Additionally, there are some wild horses and ponies that can be found along the eastern coast of the U.S. The Corolla horses are found in the outer banks of North Carolina, while the Chincoteague ponies are found on Assateague Island, just off Virginia and Maryland. Thanks for joining us. If you would like to know more about equine and horse programs for both youth and adults, check with your local extension office. Special thank you to Lori Kegley and Iron Mountain Farms for the use of their horses and farm for the filming of this video. We hope you enjoyed this presentation on Farm Day with Horses and that you'll check out our other Farm Day videos online.